watching Bernadette TV and today we're talking about how to sell without selling. So let's start right there. First of all, why do we even know, need to know how to sell without selling? Um, just the fact that we want to do that shows how many judgments we have against selling that is somehow, it, it, you know, it's bad or it's wrong or it's dirty or it's pushy or whatever. Um, and I would imagine that most of us have had at some stage or another the experience of being on the receiving end of pretty poor selling techniques where it felt like we were being pushed. It felt like the other person was more interested in serving their agenda than meeting our needs. And, you know, if you're sensitive, you don't even have to be that sensitive, but you might think, I don't want people to see me that way. And I know I certainly felt like that. So for a long time in my sales career and then in my business career, I was someone that almost like leant back, that um, I was so uh, wanting to avoid being perceived as pushy that I went in the other direction. But it's important to recognize that being laid back when it comes to selling doesn't actually serve the customer any more than being pushy. So when did things start to change for me? Things started to change for me when I learned that the word to sell comes from a Finnish word meaning to serve. And when I thought about that and I thought, well, actually, I'm happy to serve people. And in fact, I enjoy serving people and I enjoy having conversations with people where I find out what they need and then match or don't match what I have to offer to meet up with that. Um, I can do that. And that was the moment that everything changed for me. So I want to give you now my three top tips on how you can sell without selling. So how I discovered this first tip was because shortly after um, I learned that the word to sell comes from the Finnish word meaning to serve. Um, I was in my office and I took a phone call from someone who had seen one of my articles and she wanted to find out more about how I could help her, specifically her staff inside of her business. And I just started to ask her questions and ask her about what was currently going on, what she wanted to achieve uh, with through her staff and what she wanted them to be doing and what was it that they weren't doing that she wanted them to do, what were they doing she didn't want them to do. And we just really started to explore where she currently was and where she wanted to be. And as we had this conversation, I didn't even get to the point where I could offer her uh, what I could offer her. She actually said, you know, as I'm talking to you, I realize you're exactly who I want to work with. Like, how soon can we get started? Now, I was blown away because at that point I hadn't said, OK, let me tell you about my training courses. I hadn't said, let me tell you what I could do. But what she said to me was, I want my staff, when they're dealing with people on the phone, to be treating them and making them feel the way that you're making me feel, Bernadette. And so I realized that all I'd done, all I'd done was ask questions and listen. There is a massive myth that to be successful at selling, you have to have the gift of the gab, be the talker, have plenty to say. I've actually found the opposite is true. The more I shut up, the more I just ask questions and listen, the more I sell. So the first thing to do if you want to sell without selling is stop thinking about what it is that you want to say and start putting your attention on the other person and asking questions about their current situation, their desired situation, and what's stopping them from having their desired situation. That's going to open up all sorts of possibilities. So tip number two, and this was also something I was doing in that conversation that day, was to summarize. And all I did, there was no, nothing clever about this, but as we were talking, to make sure that I was fully understanding what this lady was telling me, I was regularly summarizing. So I was saying things like, okay, so what you're telling me is this is where you currently are and this is where you want to be, is that right? Or I was saying things like, okay, so what you're saying to me is you really want to have this, but right now you don't have that because these are the top three obstacles. And then I'd relay the obstacles that she just shared with me. So over and over and over, I was summarizing back what she was sharing to me. Now, don't underestimate just how powerful that is, because when you summarize and you reflect back to a person in that way, first of all, they know they've been truly heard, which is so important. And it's something that very few people re really get to truly experience these days. But secondly, you actually help to clarify their thinking when you act as that mirror, when you summarize and reflect in that way. So that's tip number two. 
The third thing to do is to simply make an invitation to the next step. Now, in the example I just shared with you, I didn't even get a chance to do that because she basically said to me, you know, I can tell you're the person we want to work with. How soon can we get started? It's marvelous when that happens. But sometimes you need, if you're wearing the sales hat, to be the person that nudges that along. So one thing that I might do is just summarize the situation. And sometimes I'll actually say to the next person, so what do you think the next step should be? Or where do you think we should go from here? So I'll ask for their feedback. Or sometimes I might say, well, you know, from what you're telling me, what it is you want and what's stopping you, I have something coming up that I think would really help you solve that. Would you like to hear more about it? So that's a very soft way of summarizing. Remember, that's important, tip two, and then making an invitation to the next step. So it's not rocket science, folks. It's three things, you put them together, but I promise you add these three things, add in one of them and it's gonna make a difference. Do all three and you are gonna see a huge difference in your sales results. And you're gonna be able to sell more without feeling that you're doing yucky selling. So uh, I'd love to hear what you think and how this episode has helped you. Please add your comments um, to the chat below. Tell me more about your experiences with selling as either as a salesperson or as a customer. Let's keep the conversation moving. And I look forward to seeing you on a future episode of Bernadette TV.